So a lot of parents come here and see what we are doing. A lot of visitors from, uh, there, there, there are some volunteers who come here from tourists who come here and volunteer their work hours here. They pick this as an example and they are inspired. They are teachers who have taught here and they have declined to move on to more lucrative jobs. Okay? They've picked this example and they feel they want to do this work. The local leaders, the church itself, uh, frequently visits this school and baptizes children here and takes them through the Christian uh, uh, sacraments and so on. Uh, what I think about community is, you know, we are from different backgrounds, if I'm to say. People have different mentalities, you understand. When I was starting this, uh, the community wasn't uh, very happy about me. Because they were like, this boy, what are you doing? You are bringing, uh, you know, Bayaya, we, we always call it Bayaya in Uganda. You are bringing mad people here to start stealing our things, you understand? Because if you bring uh, those people around, people start to, start to do what? To get scared. They are going to beat us. They are going to take out our phones. They are going to do what? You understand? But good enough, their community now is picking up. Because they have seen that I'm doing a good job. And um, they are also now happy because um, we no longer have criminals here. Like in the art industry, they have begun to recognize that they also need to be part of the arts. And then like we have had some of our teams perform in the different festivals. People have done shows now which are inclusive. For example, Latin Flavor did an inclusive show which was catering for people with different with hearing impairment. Uh, we, had, we have had musicians who have now done music videos where they, they, they have incorporated maybe sign language or someone with physical disability. And uh, I think for me that is a major impact, like the arts industry to begin to recognize that also there are people who are differently abled and they can, uh, and they can put them on the program, they can program them. I came down with a bunch of ladies from uh, the Zumba class that I run. Of course, when they come in, a lot of them are walking so close to me, holding onto my clothes and saying, Jerry, there's one coming close to me, but they realize that they speak normally, they understand what they're saying, they understand each other. If they ask you for money and you say no, they will not be violent. So they started, in, you know, appreciating them more. It's been a mixed uh, emotion when you go out to the communities. Some communities are they are willing to show us who the girls are, but they don't want to have anything to do with them because they feel they are naughty, they will spoil, you know that word in Uganda, they will spoil our children. Many people don't know their world, many people find them nameless and faceless. We thought rehabilitation was going to be difficult, but reintegration is hard because the communities where most of the girls come from are as broken as they are. But yet Ugandans are kind. Once you educate them about who these girls are, who these women are, who victims of trafficking are, they, they, they become a bit more embracing. So I think our role is to educate the community, but also what we found in the community, sometimes they feel helpless. What can I do to help? And so part of our journey is also to teach the community the different ways they can help. But yet other community members have been very, very, very helpful. I mean, it's the community that has given us accommodation. The people who have funded us really are our Ugandan community.